Here's an overview of a Jordan canonical form. We'll break the examples out over several videos. Here, we'll just give one example that gives a general flavor of the big picture. Now, we'll have n by n matrix A over some field F. F is the complex numbers. We can always put our matrix A in Jordan canonical form. We start by computing the characteristic polynomial of A. So it's determinant lambda i minus a. If we could factor the characteristic polynomial completely into powers of linear factors, then we can use Jordan canonical form. Another way to say that, all eigenvalues are going to live in our base field. Now, if this condition fails, then we have to use another canonical form, such as rational canonical form. Once we have our characteristic polynomial, I want to compute the minimal polynomial of A. This will be the monic polynomial of smallest degree, such that if we evaluate A as a matrix polynomial, we get the zero matrix L. Now, we know the minimal polynomial of A divides the characteristic polynomial of A. And if we have some factor that occurs in the characteristic polynomial, that irreducible factor must occur in the minimal polynomial, with degree at least 1. So, only difference here, we have the same factors, but we may have different exponents. Now, with these two polynomials, okay, we can get some data that gives us crude information about our Jordan canonical form. So, if we fix an eigenvalue C sub i, Okay, we're going to focus on the block for C sub i. Okay, this block is going to be composed of Jordan blocks going down the diagonal. We'll talk about Jordan blocks in a little bit. The size of okay, all of our blocks put together is going to be equal to K sub i. K sub i is going to be the exponent of lambda minus C sub i in our characteristic polynomial. Now, looking at the Jordan blocks going down the diagonal, the largest Jordan block is going to have size j sub i, where j sub i is the exponent of lambda minus c sub i in our minimal polynomial. And then, if I want to know the number of blocks that go with c sub i, so the number of Jordan blocks, then we're just going to calculate the dimension of the null space of a minus c sub i times i. Okay, this is just going to be the dimension of the eigenspace for C sub i. If I want more information about our blocks, or if I want to find a basis that puts A in Jordan canonical form, we need to look at null spaces beyond our eigenspaces. So, if we fix an eigenvalue C sub i, I'll define V sub C sub i, so the null space, A minus C sub i times the identity matrix, raised to the j sub i power. So recall j sub i is the exponent from the minimal polynomial. Then, with c sub i understood, we'll define w sub l as the null space of a minus c sub i times the identity matrix raised to the lth power. Now, this is going to give us a chain of inclusions. So 0 contained in w sub 1, contained in w sub 2 all the way up through w sub j sub i, which is equal to v sub c sub i. So all the information that we'll need for the block composed of Jordan blocks that go with c sub i is contained in here. Now, if I want to find a basis for each Jordan block, two options. If all of our Jordan blocks are of size 2 by 2 or less, we could work from the bottom up. So I could start from the eigenspace, and then solve the equations to get to the next level of. If we have a block of size 3 by 3 or greater, then we're going to want to work from the top down. So I would start by finding a vector in w sub j sub i that's not in w sub j sub i minus 1. We keep applying a minus c sub i i to it. So I can do that j sub i minus 1 times. Then on the j sub i time, it's going to send it to 0. That's going to give me okay, a basis for our block. And then we just set those vectors aside. Then we keep repeating until we exhaust 
all of this subspace that's not in here, and then we keep working our way down. Once we've done that for each eigenvalue C sub i, okay, we can collect all the bases that we generate from this step. We can put those together, and then we're gonna have that our space is just a direct sum of each of our V sub C sub i's. So collecting all these bases is gonna give us a basis for our big space. Then we just apply our conjugation to get Jordan canonical form. Let's take a closer look at our Jordan blocks. So we'll assume we have a V is in the previous board. For simplicity, we'll assume that V is in the top level. So V is in W sub J, but not in W sub J minus one. That means we can apply A minus CI to V repeatedly, J minus one or fewer times to get something not zero. But if we apply it J times, we get zero. That's how we're gonna get the basis that goes with our block. So we'll start with V, call it V1. We apply A minus CI, we get V2. We apply it again, we get V3. And I could do it J minus one times to get V sub J. But if we do it one more time, we're gonna send V sub J to zero. So that's gonna be the basis we use for our block. Now, one thing to note, okay, V sub J is gonna be an eigenvector for A. If I apply A minus CI, to V sub J, we get zero. If we push CVJ to the other side, we have our eigenvector condition. Now note, if we take the span of these vectors, okay, we're only gonna have a one-dimensional eigenspace for A with eigenvalue C. Now, what does A minus CI look like on this basis? So what's happening here? Well, we're gonna carry V1 to V2, V2 to V3, V3 to V4, until we get up to Vj, and then that's gonna to go to zero. So, since I like my Jordan form in upper triangular form, we're gonna take our V, put it in the last slot, and then we're gonna work our way to the left. So, where does V1 get sent to? It gets sent to V2. V1 is gonna be the last vector, so it corresponds to this zero in the linear combination. This one corresponds to V2, and then the rest are zeros. Where does V2 go to? That gets sent to V3. So V1 gets a zero, V2 gets a zero, V3 gets a one, and then it's all zeros going up. Then you'll see, when we fill everything in, we're gonna have zeros everywhere, except for ones on the diagonal above the main diagonal. Now, if I wanna just put this in terms of how A acts. Well, if I wanna move the CI to this side, then what we're doing is just putting Cs on the diagonal. And so note, that's what our Jordan block looks like. It's gonna be zeros everywhere, ones on the diagonal above the main diagonal, and then C, your eigenvalue, down the main diagonal. If you like your Jordan form lower triangular, then you're just gonna put your basis vectors in the other order. So I start with a V1, and then I work my way to the right. Finally, an example. So in this case, we'll have two eigenvalues. So we'll have two Vs. Each V is gonna consist of a single block. And then we'll find the generator for each block. Now, our matrix A, get okay, over the complex numbers, we have zeros everywhere, except for ones on the diagonal below the main diagonal. In the last column, I have zero, zero, minus one, two. We work out the characteristic polynomial. We'll have lambda squared times lambda minus one squared. So our eigenvalues are zero and one, each with multiplicity two. For our minimal polynomial, okay, so that you have to work out. We'll have lambda squared, lambda minus one squared. So these are equal. And now we see the largest block for eigenvalue zero and eigenvalue one are both gonna be equal to two. Since I have a four by four matrix, that gives away our entire Jordan canonical form. We're gonna have two blocks. Okay, the dimension of each V is gonna be equal to two. We have a largest block of size two by that minimal polynomial. So we see that we have to have the Jordan form, okay, zero, one, zero, zero for the zero block. 
1101 for the one block. The tricky part, we want to find the basis that gets us from our A to our Jordan form. Let's find our basis. First, eigenvalue zero. So V zero is equal to the null space, A minus CI to the exponent of the minimal polynomial. So that's A squared. If we work out A squared, we get this matrix. Its null space is given by the span of one minus two, one, zero, two minus three, zero, one. So that's gonna be our W2. For W1, we want the null space of A minus CI to the first power, which is just the null space of A. And that's given by the span of 0, 1, minus 2, 1. Now, thing to note, we want to check. So if I apply this matrix to each of these vectors, we get 0 to come out. If I apply A to this vector, we expect 0 to come out. In this case, that's going to mean this vector is an eigenvector for A with eigenvalue 0. So expect that for w sub 1. Now, to find the basis that gives us our Jordan block, you take any vector in w2 that's not in w1. The only way I can be in w1 is if I'm a multiple of this vector here. So either of these vectors will do. So I'll take the first vector. So v1 is 1 minus 2, 1, 0. To get v2, we apply a minus ci. So we're just going to apply A. And that's going to give us 0, 1, minus 2, 1. And so we have our basis that gives us the Jordan block. Now note, this is still going to be spanning W2, because 2 minus 3, 0, 1 can be written as 2V1 plus V2. So that's another check on my work. Now, what does A look like with respect to this basis? Well, A of V1 is going to go to V2. So that means for the column that goes with V1, okay, the coefficient of V1 is zero, coefficient of V2 is one. A is gonna send V2 to zero, okay, it's in the null space of A. So we're gonna have a zero and a zero. So this is gonna be our Jordan block that goes with eigenvalue zero. Now, for eigenvalue one, same procedure, just a few extra steps. For v sub 1, we use the null space of a minus i squared. So we get this matrix here. We find its null space. That's given by the span of 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's going to be our w2 prime. For w1 prime, I use the null space of a minus i. That'll be given by the span of 0, 0, 1, minus 1. OK, again, we check. We apply this matrix to each of these vectors. We get 0. Here, if I apply A to this vector, since we have eigenvalue one, we expect to get this vector back. And we do, so that's our check. Now, to find the basis for the Jordan block, I find any vector in W2 prime, it's not in W1 prime. Okay, again, either of these vectors will do. So we take the first one, so it's our V1 prime. To get V2 prime, we apply A minus I. That gives me 0, 0, minus 1, 1. And we note it's a multiple of this vector. So it's going to be an eigenvector for eigenvalue 1. Okay, and again, we're in W1 prime, so that's expected. Now, if we want to see what our Jordan block looks like, okay, if I apply A to V1 prime, we get 0, 0, 0, 1, which is V1 prime plus V2 prime. If I apply A to V2 prime, we get 0, 0, minus 1, 1. And that's our v2 prime. So when we set up our block for a, v1 prime goes to v1 prime plus v2 prime. So both coefficients are 1. So I have a 1 and a 1. For v2 prime, we're going to go to v2 prime itself. So that means coefficient for v2 prime is 1. For v1 prime, it's 0. So we note here, we have our Jordan block for eigenvalue 1. Now that we have our basis, we can find the matrix P that carries A to the Jordan form by conjugation. So we get our matrix P by taking our basis vectors, we load them in as the column vectors of our P. Then the relation is P inverse AP is equal to 
or Jordan Form J. Now for here, we're just interested in checking our work. So I don't want to invert our matrix P. Okay, it's four by four, so that takes some work. So instead I'll push the P to the other side. And then we're going to check A times P equals P times J. So it's going to be equivalent to this equation here. Now, we work out each of those products. So A times P, we get this matrix. P times J, we get this matrix. And we note these are equal. So we have a relation A times P equals P times J.